remember, triple, true, false, just test them one at a time. Let's look. Which of the following is or are true? Okay, one at a time. A production process that exhibits only random variability, exhibits only random variability, would be considered out of control. That is false. As a statement, if you wanted to correct it, a production process that exhibits only random variability is considered in control. Oh, a production process that, consider, that exhibits assignable variation is considered out of control. Anyway, top statement is false. Second one, if a point on a control chart falls outside one of the control limits, this suggests assignable variation is present in the production process. That is true. That is by definition what a control chart is for. Oh, all right. Now, three, assignable variation in a production process is completely random and cannot be prevented. That is false. If you wanted to correct that statement, random variation or natural variation in a production process is completely random and cannot, the key thing is cannot be prevented. Oh, all right. So only the center tested true here, only two. Uh, although that would be a partial credit answer right there. Okay, let's look next. Oh, a scenario. All right. Toby Skinner, a quality analyst, wants to construct a sample mean chart or X bar chart for monitoring and controlling a packaging process. She knows from past experience that whenever this process is under control, package weight is normally distributed. Wait, wait a minute. Key piece of information with a standard deviation of two ounces. So there's this process she wants to monitor and she knows the standard deviation. I'm going to list it again so we don't lose sight of it. While the process was in control, she took several samples, each, sam oh, each sample consisting of four packages. Capital N is always sample size equals four. We're going to need that later. I just know it. All right, and then here's the data. Here's five samples and here's how much they weighed. Um, all right, what are the questions? What is the standard deviation of the sample means whenever this process is under control? Now you might be thinking, because it's E right here, well you wouldn't wrote it, right? You said that she knew the standard devi deviation and it was two. This is the standard deviation in the process. The standard deviation of the sample means, meaning by how much should these things wobble, these groups of four, is a small adjustment of that. It's the original one cut down a little bit by dividing it by the square root of the sample size. I knew it. I knew we were going to need that number. Okay, so that's two divided by the square root of four, or wait a minute, that's two divided by two, which winds up being one. Yep. it's only one ounce. Okay, what's the next question? If Toby uses Z equals three for her upper and lower control limit formulas, what would be the upper and lower control limits for her chart? Oh, okay, well it would help to know what the formulas were for the upper and lower control limits of a X bar chart. No problem, that's the kind of thing that would be on a formula sheet you take x double bar and you add or you subtract z times the standard deviation of the sample means which is oh we can do it use our work here from before the original standard deviation divided by the square root of n um oh all right now wait a minute x double bar what is x double bar x bar is always mean always average so x double bar is average of the averages oh right we sort of in a certain way if we were making a control chart, skipped a step here. She got all these averages from these samples. We need to average the averages, x double bar. We need to average these numbers, 23, 21, 20, 19, and 20. I did, I get 20.6. That's the number we need for here. To answer this question, you'd say 20.6 plus or minus, depending on whether you're doing the upper control limit or the lower control limit, z, wait, that's right, they just proposed a z of three times, well, you can fill it in here, but we already figured out that that part was one, right, because it's two divided by the square root of four. 
So at any rate, what this winds up being is 20.6 plus or minus, this is a 1, plus or minus 3. So the upper limit should be 23.6, right? And the lower limit should be 17.6, which I believe is, yep, the first thing that was volunteered. So that's the answer. Okay, there, that's done. Next question. Suppose the packaging process will only be stopped if a sample mean falls outside the control limits. Consider the chart to be constructed using z equals 1.5. What is the probability that a sample mean will fall outside of the control limits given the process is in control? Um, okay, we don't need to determine what those limits are. But what we do need to determine, I always draw a picture, is if they were drawn with a 1.5 instead of a 3 at the Z, wait a minute, the probability the sample means will fall outside, basically how much of the natural variation got cut off. Um, okay, well how do I do that? Well wait a minute. Z equal 1.5. I really wish I just knew what this area was in here because then I would know how much got left off in there. This area in here. How do I find this area in here? Oh, that's right. The Z table. Here's the Z table from the book, right? If you needed a Z table on an exam, a Z table would be there. This Z table is telling us that for any Z you look up here, it tells you, see what's shaded in, the area from the center all the way out to where you're drawing the line. Oh, okay. Now, the Z of interest in this particular question is 1.5. So, 1.50, this first column, there's a 0.4332. 0.4332. 0.4332. Gotta remember that. 0 0.4332. 0 0.4332. Because 0.4332, or about 43% of the natural distribution, is right in there. Now, this is symmetrical, even if my artistry is not. That means that the same amount is over here on the other side. Oh, all right. I don't need to know these amounts, I need to know these amounts. Well, I think I see the way to find those amounts. First off, this cuts the whole thing in half. So if I say 0.5, the whole, half of the whole, minus one of these, I get 0 0.0668. Now, that's that right there. If I multiply that times 2, I have both of them, 0.1336, that one and that one, that's where you get the answer. Okay, if she drew the chart with a Z of 1.5, then there's about a 13% chance of one of those samples in the future falling outside the limits, when in fact actually nothing's wrong. It was just like a particularly weird sample. Oh, all right. Now, last two questions. Oh, well, wait, you know, I sketched this thing and then there was this diagram that looks quite similar. It didn't refer to this question, it referred to these two old questions, but you see that same natural distribution and here's a control chart right there. Now, what is it being asked? Consider the illustration above. Yes, we were just doing that. In which a control chart is superimposed on a normal distribution labeled feature A. Feature A, yeah, here's the normal distribution. In case you're having a hard time seeing it. Representing the distribution of natural variation in samples from the process that the control chart was designed to monitor. That's exactly what I was sketching for Toby's problem. Okay, now, what are we supposed to do with this? Various samples from that process have been plotted on the chart, that's what the dots are, visible within features B, C, and D. Okay, please answer the following two questions based on this illustration. Now, this is essentially triple true false, this next question. Let's take them one at a time. The samples charted within the horizontal bracket of feature D and feature D only would suggest this process is in control. So I need to find feature D. Well, it's right here. All right. 
and it's a bracket indicating all the samples from basically like from here to here. All the samples from here, here to here, I'm looking for two things. One, they're all within the limits because that's the original limits of the control chart. And other than that, I don't see anything particularly interesting. I don't see any patterns or design. That is indicating only random variation. And if we're only talking about from here to here, feature D, yeah, we would say that that's in control. Okay, now, wait a minute, that's only one of three statements. Both features B and C can be interpreted as signals that assignable variation is present. This is feature B. It's just one of the samples, except it's outside the limits. Notice that. Feature C is indicating several samples. They are inside the limits, but do you notice that there's a pattern? Unlike, you know, did it, did it, did up and down, up and down, up and down, all of a sudden we have a group of them and if you look, they're basically lining up. They're creating what's known as a run. Oh, all right. Both of those are by definition considered symptoms of assignable variation. They're signaling that assignable variation, something that's happening for a reason, is present in the system. So this is true. Now, statement three is mutually exclusive of statement two. Notice that only one of these things can be true. Only feature B suggests the process is out of control. Since we have declared uh, statement two correct or true, then we have to declare statement three false or incorrect because they both can't be true. Oh, all right, so the top two tested is true. So that is one and two, meaning that that would be partial credit. Right, and that would be partial credit. That's good. And then one last question. Ooh, nice and short. The area of the feature A tails located outside the upper and lower control limits represent what? Now, what is it that we're talking about? It's the same thing that I was fascinated with in this question, except on this diagram, it's right here, the tails that are outside the control limits. What do they represent? Well, it says assignable variation. It's true that when samples fall outside the limits, we assume that assignable variation is present, but that's not what the two tails on this distribution that represent natural, normal, random variation represent. Groupthink and consumer risk group think it doesn't have anything to do with this consumers risk no not really the answer is producers risk that's a picture of producers risk consumers risk the other distractor consumers risk is the chance that something de truly defective will sneak past you that has more to do with what's sneaking through the middle producers risk the risk that you will shut down the system and you will throw out things when in fact actually nothing's wrong what happened there was just normal that is represented by how much of the distribution itself represents things that normally happen is in fact amputated or cut off by those limits that you put down